Hey everyone, so hope you're doing well. This is going to be the second video in our series of videos on chapter six. The first video we talked about SN2, and in this video we're going to be talking about, you guessed it, SN1. So if you just came from the SN2 video or if you watched the SN2 video some time ago, you'll know that there's four specific things that we talked about for SN2. And just like in that video, I'm going to talk about four specific things for SN1. All right, so the first thing is the degree of the alkyl halide. So the degree of the alkyl halide, we prefer three degree over two degree, quite a bit over one degree. One degree is pretty bad and methyl halides just don't even really work. It's it's a complete mess. Methyl halides are really, really bad. So three degree and two degree are good, one degree nah, and methyl really bad. So I would not use methyl at all or one degree. So that's one thing that we need to know. The next thing that we need to know is the solvent. So in SN2, we use polar aprotic, but in SN1, we use polar protic. Okay, so polar protic, what does that mean? Well, that's something like water or methanol or acetic acid. Why are all those protic? Well, that means, protic means that they can act as a Bronsted acid, right? So you think about water, it can donate a proton, it can donate a hydrogen. So if it can donate a proton, then it is protic, okay? So any alcohol, water, any acid, any like acetic acid, any acid like that is gonna be protic. So we prefer polar protic for SN1. Uh, we also prefer a weak nucleophile. How do I know something's a weak nucleophile? Well, it has no charge. So a strong nucleophile has a negative charge, weak nucleophile has no charge, okay? It's pretty simple. And then last thing we're gonna talk about stereochemistry. We have a racemization, fun word, of the stereochemistry. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if I start with R, I end with R and S in my products. I get two products, R and S. If I start with S, I also end with R and S, okay? Uh, if you wanna think about it a different way, if I start with it on, if I start with my product on a wedge, then I end with my, or if I start with my reacting material on a wedge, sorry, then my product is gonna be on a wedge and a dash, right? So let's look at a couple of examples here. And I think this will kind of have it make a little bit more sense. So I'm gonna use, my R2-bromobutane, right? So we're starting with an R reactant. And I'm gonna be putting in water here, okay? So you'll notice I didn't write anything below the arrow. Typically, you write the solvent below the arrow, but I didn't write anything below the arrow because an SN1 is a solvolysis reaction. So a solvolysis reaction is any reaction that the nucleophile and the solvent are the same thing. So I'll say it again. A solvolysis reaction is any reaction where the nucleophile and the solvent are the same. So in this case, our solvent is water, but it's also a nucleophile at the same time, okay? So how do I know what the product is gonna be? Well, we're gonna get two products, but I'll worry about writing the first one first. So how do I know what replaces the halogen? Well, if I take a look at water, it's H2O, right? So this oxygen has two lone pairs on it. So oxygen is going to be the part that's going to donate the electron pair, right? So any part that's going to donate the electron pair, all I'm going to do is remove a hydrogen, pretend it's not there. So let's pretend this hydrogen's not here. So just remove one hydrogen, and then this is what I'm gonna write, OH, right? So I'm gonna take BR and replace it with OH, and then I'm gonna write it on a wedge, but remember I also need to write my other product where it's on a dash. So this one's R, this one's S, okay? So I get both those products, okay? So this is all I needed to do for an S1 reaction, I'm done. Let's do one more example with a ring here. 
So we'll put, we'll put a chlorine on a dash. Sure, why not? And then we'll use methanol. So remember, methanol looks like this. So oxygen, again, is going to be my nucleophilic atom. So I'm just going to take a hydrogen off the nucleophilic atom, remove that hydrogen, and then this is what I'm going to write. OCH3 is what I'm going to write. All right. So all I need to do now is where the halogen was, write OCH3, and then write it on a wedge as well. And I'm done. Okay, that simple. That's all I need to do. All right. So that's my entire reaction for SN1. So those are both the examples. Now, I think that it would be in our best interest to look at the mechanism. All right. So let me move over just a little bit here. So we have some room. And we're going to take a look at the mechanism. So I'm going to do a mechanism of the one that we just looked at a second ago, right? So we looked at bromine on there, and then we put it in water, and we got OH on a wedge, and we also got OH on a dash, right? So we're going to look at the mechanism of this one, all right? So here we go. not OH, sorry. We're starting with bromine on the wedge. All right, very good. So I'm gonna draw my electrons around here. And the very first step of an SN1 reaction is that the halogen just leaves, okay? Very simple, don't overthink it. All that's gonna happen is the halogen is going to leave the molecule and it's gonna take the two electrons in this bond with it. So it's gonna take these two electrons in the bond with it and it's just going to leave. So what is that going to look like? Well, bromine's gone, right? And then what else do I get? Well, I also get the bromine just by itself, right? So bromine has these electron pairs around it. And so now it has a negative charge. But remember that this carbon here, this carbon here just lost a bond, right? So if carbon just lost a bond, then it has to have a positive charge now, right? It has to. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So this is my carbocation intermediate, okay? This is my carbocation, all right? I'll write that word, carbocation intermediate, okay? That's what this is, all right? So again, as I'm drawing the mechanism, the next thing that's gonna happen is my nucleophile, in this case it's water, is gonna come in and it's gonna use one of its lone pairs to donate to that positive charge on that carbon, all right? So it's gonna make a bond with that positively charged carbon, all right? So what's that gonna look like? Well, if I draw it, then I have oxygen with two hydrogens on it, and I just used a bond to make, or excuse me, I just used an electron pair to make that bond, so I just have one electron pair left, so this is also positively charged, okay? If I do the formal charge, one, two, three, four, five, so six minus five is plus one, right? So now I have a positive charge on this water that's attached to it. Any molecule does not want to have a positive charge, so having a positive charge is bad, makes a molecule unstable, so it wants to get rid of that positive charge. How is it going to do that? Well, remember that water is my solvent, right? I have a insane amount of water just floating around. So what's going to happen is an, what, another water molecule is going to come in. And water can act as an acid or a base. So in this case, water is going to act as a Bronsted base. And it's going to take this hydrogen off of this oxygen. And then these two electrons are going to go onto this oxygen. What this is going to do is it's going to get rid of this charge and this uh, this uh, excuse me, this water is going to gain that hydrogen, all right? So this is going to be helpful for our molecule. So now I'm done, okay? So I get the oxygen, or the OH, rather, 
on a wedge, and I also get the OH on a dash, right? And then I also have a byproduct, right? What's my byproduct? Well, water, okay? But more specifically, it's water that gained a hydrogen. So what's water that gained a hydrogen? Well, that's hydronium, right? That's H3O plus, okay? So this is my full mechanism, all right? So this is three steps. If we wanna count this as a step, this is one, two, three steps, all right? Nothing, nothing too crazy. There are mechanisms that are substantially longer than this one. So I will, I will be glad to, glad to call it good in three steps. Okay. Let's look at one more example. So our example that we did just a minute ago, we'll take a look at that one with the ring structure. So chlorine, and then I had it in methanol. And then what were my two products? Well, again, my two products were on a wedge, OCH3, but I also had or that was on dash, sorry. This is on a wedge, OCH3. Okay. So this is the next mechanism that I'm going to work on. So let's take a look at it here. So we have chlorine. What's my first step of SN1? Ionization, which means that chlorine just leaves. Chlorine, chlorine says, see you later, I'm out of here. So chlorine leaves, and then what does that give me? Well, that gives me a positive charge on this carbon, right? And then what else do I have? Well, I also have chlorine just off by itself, right? Cl minus, okay? So now what's going to happen is, again, just like in the last one, my nucleophile is going to come in and attack. So I'm going to say CH3OH is going to come in and it's going to donate a lone pair and it's going to attack there at that positive charge. All right. So now what we get is similar to what we got last time, right? We get O bonded to a CH3 bonded to a hydrogen with one lone pair and it has a positive charge. So again, just like last time, I need to get rid of this positive charge, right? This positive charge is unstable. It doesn't want this to happen. So another one of these methanols is gonna come in, right? So another methanol is gonna come in and whenever that happens, it's gonna act as a base, just like water did in the last one, right? This is very similar to the last one, right? All mechanisms are very similar. Like all SN1 mechanisms are gonna run by the same thing. It's just different structures, okay? That's all we're doing. So this lone pair is gonna go here, take a hydrogen, and then these electrons are gonna go onto that oxygen, right? Okay, so now I'm done. So now I just need to write my product. So I get OCH3 on a wedge with my two lone pairs on OCH3. And then I also get OCH3 on a dash. Okay. And then I have a byproduct just like here. I had this byproduct. I'm going to have a byproduct here. So now it's CH3OH but it's not CH3OH, it's CH3OH2 because this CH3OH just gained a hydrogen. So it's CH3OH2 and I just have one lone pair on it now and this has a positive one charge. And I'm done. So this is my entire mechanism for both of these SN1 reactions, all right? There are other things that can happen in SN1. We can have a hydride shift, we can have a methyl shift, and we can have a ring expansion. I'm going to designate each of those for their own specific video. I think that that's the best way to go about it. I don't want this video to be 40 minutes long. So I think that that'll be the best way to go about that. So hopefully this was helpful. I do appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you in the next videos.